the major factors affecting crop production in many countries and Malawi is not an exceptional. This, coupled with overdependence on maize as staple food, has led to food insecurity and hunger among many households in Malawi. However, Malawi is blessed with a range of crops species that are drought tolerant and could save the country from effects of climate change. The Ministry of Agriculture, through Department of Research Services, established a Gini Bank section with the aim of conserving various plant species. Noli Fampogna explains the role of Gini Bank in conserving the plant species. The government thought it wise that uh, this section be established such that it is mandated to safeguard all cultivated uh, plant species in Malawi. We are also mandated to correct all plant species, which include cultivated crops and their wild relatives. Once we correct the materials, once we have discovered that this material and that material is not well represented in the gene bank, we go out for eco-geographical surveys such that we, dis we uh, identify or establish the uh, geographical pattern, the diversity pattern of that particular material. And thereafter, once we identify the hot spots for that particular crop, we go out for collection missions. After collecting those materials, then we bring them in, process them. After processing them, we do, uh, we, 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 we take some material for characterization. Some of them, we keep them in the gene bank. That is if we have enough seed quantities. If the seed quantity is small, we take all the material outside, multiply them thereafter, process them, keep them in the, uh, in the, in the seed gene bank, take some out to the farmers for only farm conservation. In order to ensure that farmers have access to crops that are drought tolerant, but have been deemed neglected since they are no longer being produced in large quantities, the Plant Resource 219 project was born. This project is focusing on climate change adaptation, but with the major focus on the plant genetic resources that we have, particularly the neglected crops that our grandparents were using, were growing, and were uh, utilizing. And these particular crops, we have selected cowpea, we have selected the uh, finger millet, peel millet, we have also yams, because our, our parents used to grow yams, to have yams and process as, as, as food, and then we have sorghum. So those are the crops that we are focusing on. The Plant Resources 219 project, which is commonly known as PR219 project, is a two-year project which is being funded by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, through International Treaty on Plant Genetics. The project is being implemented in Salima, Karonga, Balaka, Chukwawa, and Nsanje districts by Chitedze Research Station's Gini Bank sections, in collaboration with Center for Environmental Policy Analysis, CIPA, Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Luana and World Vision. To ensure that farmers own the project, a participatory approach was followed. As Mr. Mwendo Piri, the acting team leader for PR219 project, explains. We engaged in a critical analysis, and so farmers were able to share with us why they are not growing uh, finger millet, for example, why they are not growing sorghum, for example. And so, in course of that discussion, we were saying, in the light of climate change, variability in terms of rainfall, in terms of drought, 
what are the crops that would really demonstrate, that would really save the farmers in case we face a uh, drought? Mr. and Mrs. Jafali Imedi of Mbatamira village in Salima are among some of the farmers who are growing some of these neglected crops. I grow different crops like cowpeas, sorghum, finger millet, piru millet and yams. These are indigenous crops and we got them from research station. The idea was to promote these neglected crops to mitigate the effects of climate change. I am growing neglected crops because they are beneficial. For sorghum, it is beneficial to my household because after I process it, I am able to make different kinds of food that I feed my family. A lot of farmers in the area have been motivated to grow these neglected crops after seeing the benefits that Mr. Imedi and his wife are getting. I have learned a lot about the production of cowpeas, finger millet, and early maturing soccer. I have welcomed this project because it has brought back neglected crops, such as finger millet. These crops are drought tolerant and could save us from the effects of climate change. But where can one find the seed for these crops? The gene bank is a public gene bank. It is open to farmers, scientists, breeders and any other. We, we issue seeds free of charge. We don't sell. That's currently, that's what we are doing. However, sustainability is a major factor affecting implementation of the project. Mr. Mwendo Piri explains some of the measures that have been put in place to ensure that the project is sustainable and that the farmers continue to enjoy the benefits after the project has been phased out. Farmers are in groups multiplying the seed. They have been trained in seed multiplication in how they can manage the seed even post harvest management of that seed. Okay. So it, there are several groups that have embarked on seed production. Now, with that seed production, they have now moved a step ahead where other farmers surrounding them are able to come and buy from them and they are able to sell the seed. So seed production is done by the farmers and this is not the type where we will get this, the seed and it is done by the, the seed company. They have been trained, they are in a cooperative, others are in associations focusing on seed production. So we have linked them to seed services unit of the Department of Agriculture Research so that they can even continue monitoring the quality of seed that they will be able to produce. This coupled with alarming demand and commitment from farmers is a clear indication that the project will be sustainable. I have welcomed this project because it has brought back neglected crops such as finger millet, cowpeas and yams. These crops are drought tolerant and could save us from the effects of climate change. However, the future of the neglected crops lies in the hands of farmers and stakeholders in the agricultural sector. In fact, we believe that the farmers are the custodians of these materials. As such, they are the best conservationists. As we are conserving them in the gene bank, we also do only farm, such that these uh, conservation initiatives complement each other. In addition, policymakers have great role to play as well. It's very interesting now. We are yet research is yet to, to to do more work because in areas where we have yams and we have goats, we have not seen goats browsing yam leaves, which means yam goat farming system would be a viable system in some arid areas where you would have goats browsing in the field of yams and by so doing they are already weeding the area. 
and but because they will not feed on the young. So if that proves to be right, then we need the policy makers to look at those issues and say, what is it that we can uh, uh, improve in terms of policy, in terms of, of, of the varieties that we have, the seed production, uh, the, the farmers, uh, proper intellectual property rights, all those things they need to be worked on. And we need evidence-based for them to address the policies. The message is clear. Neglected crops are important as they have a role to play in mitigating impacts of climate change. Now, I just want to, to urge our local farmers that if they, if they discover a rare species of any crop, they should bring that seed sample to Jinbari. Here we are able to identify that crop, multiply it, and store it in the gene bank for present and future use. Therefore, it is everybody's responsibility to make sure that we conserve, protect, and store these crops for increased food and nutritional security.